I'd like to talk about late woodland in the American bottom of West Central Illinois. The American bottom is a 20 mile wide floodplain on the east side of the Mississippi River in the vicinity of present day St. Louis. The American bottom is located just south of where the Illinois River and the Missouri River join the Mississippi River. Here is where the Mississippian period chiefdom of Cahokia arose, and Cahokia apparently was the heartland of Mississippian. Mississippian spread to the rest of the southeast from this area. This is one of the best studied areas of eastern North America. In the late 1970s, the FAI 270 project began. Survey, testing, and excavation was conducted in front of the highway connector that eventually was built around St. Louis. Excavations uncovered entire sites and collected large faunal and botanical samples, and many book-length reports were written on the research. This chart shows the late woodland, emergent Mississippian, and Mississippian periods. On the left-hand side, you can see the period names and times, and on the right-hand side, the different phase names. Here, like elsewhere in eastern North America, middle woodland was dominated by Hopewell with its elaborate mortuary rituals. So this is the other Hopewell center, the Havana Hopewell, as opposed to the Ohio Hopewell. Late woodland in the American bottom is found between AD 300 and 800. Between late woodland and Mississippian, archeologists have defined a separate period just for this area, sometimes called emergent Mississippian, between AD 800 and 1000. Late woodland in the American bottom is characterized by separate, more or less equivalent sociopolitical groups. But during the emergent Mississippian, political centralization began. Throughout late woodland and emergent Mississippian, we see population increasing, culminating in the establishment of Cahokia as a paramount Mississippian Mound Civic Ceremonial Center for the area. What follows in this talk is based on Johannesson who summarized changes in foodways, that is, food in the social and cultural context. Foodways provides a framework for pulling together disparate sorts of evidence and talking about changes in human behavior. Late woodland in the American bottom is divided into three phases. The earliest is the Rosewood phase, AD 300 to 450, the Mund phase, AD 450 to 600, and the Patrick phase, AD 600 to 800. You'll notice now that we're talking in 200 to 150 year lengths of time. In other words, we know a lot more about this time period than we did earlier time periods. During the late woodland rose, rosewood phase in the early late woodland, most sites are found in the uplands, but near the floodplain. Hickory nuts, as well as domesticated starchy seed complex were important in the diet. We find clusters of pits, which possibly had been inside structures, but we don't see those structures any longer. People were using local chert to make stone tools. Most of the pottery decorations that had been used in the spectacular Hopewell Middle Woodland are no longer being used. Just lip stamping, noting, and punctating continue. However, rim decorations are common. Only sub subconoidal jars were made. So far, no bowls have been found. These jars usually have a constricted opening. The surface was covered in cord marking and they were tempered with grit. During the middle late woodland mund phase, people evidently were living in scattered households. For the first time, we find deep storage pits. However, in the diet, nuts, and starchy seeds are still important, and they are still making only large cord mark jars. During the late, late woodland Patrick phase, the community layout changes. It becomes more communal with keyhole shaped structures arranged around a central plaza. 
and deep storage pits. During the late, late woodland patrick phase, the same kinds of foods are being consumed, but now there's a change in how they're eating in the social setting associated with eating of food. Oily seeds were added to the diet, and we find much more tobacco, and for the first time, pipes are common. Only a tiny amount of maize is found, obviously not yet in the diet, but by the end of the patrick phase, maize is found in 30% of the pits. In addition to jars, we also find bowls for the first time, and some of these are large. During the emergent Mississippian period, the earliest dohack phase, we find upland communities that have widely scattered houses, whereas in floodplain, villages are found with houses arranged around a central plaza. Maize is found much more frequently in 50% of the pits, and we find more intensive cropping of the Eastern agricultural complex. But otherwise, people appear to be storing and consuming food the same as earlier, using large deep storage pits, and the vessel shapes and sizes are similar, and the surface treatment is still cord marking. During the emergent Mississippian range phase, people are growing the Eastern agricultural complex, but we find increased emphasis on maize. It's now found in 80% of the pits, and the use of wild nuts is declining. We find large, deep storage pits clustering near structures. Vessel shapes are still jars and bowls, but bowls are becoming more frequent than before. And we find some new variation in form, including a new vessel type called stumpware. Villages are circular with the central plaza, and the plaza center is marked in various ways. Here you see a central pole flanked by four deep pits in a rectangle. This village obviously has a communal focus and perhaps communal storage. During the emergent Mississippian period, George Reeves in the south and Merrill phases in the north, we find the same crops and also small quantities of wild nuts, but storage pits become shallower so perhaps people are now using above ground storage bins known as corn cribs. We find more vessel types. In other words, an elaboration in the rules for cooking and serving food. Vessels are more decorated. There are some new types of vessels, including pans, seed jars, and hooded bottles, and some red and black slipping, that is coloring of vessels. Food-related activities look coordinated across the community. During the late emergent Mississippian period, we find linear strings of small settlements near Cahokia, where just a few houses are placed on tops of floodplain ridge tops. But further away, we continue to find villages with central plazas. It's during this time period that people may have begun to build at Cahokia and even to build Monk's Mound. We find the same foods, although now we're finding maize in 90% of the features, and we continue to find few nuts. We're finding even greater elaboration in dishes and pots, and more red slipping. During the Mississippian Loman phase, we find the same basic food, but the social setting in which food was consumed changed drastically. Community layout changed as the entire valley fell under the influence of Cahokia. Nucleated villages now disappear and people live on scattered farms or live in the growing mound towns. Mound centers grow in size and influence. Cahokia was building mounds on planned solar alignments and elaborate burials indicate growing elite power. We find new variations in vessels and more slipping of various colors. According to Johannesson, a major change in food production occurred during the Patrick phase around AD 750, when people began to grow and eat more maize. And following this, the kinds of food changed very little, but we do see shifts in emphasis in the diet. So despite maintaining the nearly nearly the same foods between AD 750 and 1000, 
other social aspects changed. People changed how they stored and distributed food, going from deep household pits to central communal pits to above ground storage. They went from individuals to incorporation into larger social groups and power moved to the regional center. We see changes in how food was presented, increasing elaboration of vessels plus using large bowls. Find here a stratigraphic picture showing late woodland at the bottom and more recent in time as you move up toward the top of the page and you can see the variety and elaboration of vessels increasing through time. What are the takeaway points? One, the more recent we are in time to the present, often the more detail we know about past lives and the more finely we can subdivide history. Instead of talking about thousands of years at a stretch as we did during talking about the archaic period, here we can talk about even 50 year stretches or 150 or 200 year stretches. Once pottery is in the picture, we gain a lot of information about social relationships, information that we simply didn't have prior to pottery. And when extensive excavations and analyses have been undertaken in an area, as they were with the FAI 270 project in the American Bottom, we can trace relationships among patterns, pottery, food, storage, community organization, and thereby gain fuller pictures of society. By telling you this quick survey of societies in the American bottom, ranging from the late woodland up into the initiation of the Mississippian period, I don't mean for you to memorize the names of phases. Instead, I hope that you've gained an appreciation for the types of social changes that occurred in an area like this that has been so well studied, the changes that led from the egalitarian woodland societies to the hierarchical societies of the Mississippian period, where people were born into positions and we had different classes called elites and commoners.